today we're talking about seed starting and I have started seeds in many different containers to show you that it does not matter what you have whether you have cups whether you actually have some garden containers like this one here I am going to show you how to plant I have quite a few other things to get started but we've already started jalapenos, scotch bonnets, poblano peppers, cherry tomatoes, Roma tomatoes. We have some flowers going here. Flowers need to be in shallow containers when you first start them out. So again, I'm just showing you all different containers just stuff that you may have at home you don't have to go out and buy anything special so these are cone flowers very excited about these and of course we have cayenne peppers banana peppers red peppers basil gotta love basil oh my goodness and then of course we have more cone flowers over here we got our cabbages and our cilantro little stick right there nothing fancy now they're going to need at least 16 hours of light a day um you know if you can go out and get some grow lights they're not expensive i think i got a four pack for like 20 dollars, and you know easy peasy or just put them in a very sunny place as you can see i have my sunroom with these giant sliding glass doors so it brings in a lot of light so we're going to miss them. Um, I do this twice a day. And you don't want to add too much water. You just want to keep them moist. So it's easier if you just spritz them. And you spritz them well. These are just solo cups, guys. Cups from the dollar store. And I poked a hole in the bottom. So water will drain. You don't want anything to rot. So you definitely want to have drainage. And look what I use for a drain. Look at this. You see this container? Guys, I bought chicken, right? At the store. These awesome sturdy containers. They're not flimsy. If you need to move around your cups at any time, they're not going to fall all over the place. Nice sturdy containers. Wash them really good with soapy water and vinegar to kill any bacteria. And these ones were so sturdy, I actually could put them on the top shelf of my dishwasher. And they're just drains. Perfect. Because guess what? When these plants get bigger, if you don't put them in something large now, you're going to have to transplant before your eight weeks, before you throw them in the ground. That's a lot of work. Uh-uh. Not doing it. Easy peasy. We're doing easy peasy here. You're putting four to a solo cup. You see that? By the time they're ready to go outside, all those roots are going to be all the way down to the bottom. And the little hole that you have, they're going to be sucking up water from there. And you can, oh, you don't have to water them all the time. <laughs> Make life easier on you. Gardening should be fun. Homegrown vegetables should be fun. As soon as you start turning this into work, one, you're not going to want to do it. And two, you're not going to have the time. Especially here in New York State, our growing season is not long. Water the tops. You want to know the best part of this? I think it is the best part. I didn't have to buy any seeds. Right. So, what that means for you is start saving your seeds when it comes towards the end of the season and you can dry them yourself and then have seeds. You never have to go buy them. Maybe there's something new you want to try or something you don't have. But I have so many seeds now. I haven't had to buy any in like two years. Just from my own pepper plants. Just from my own tomato plants. So just something to think of for the future. The less you have to buy, the better, right? Spray them real good. And 
since I have more to plant, I'm going to go ahead and show you how I plant these. What kind of uh, vegetables do you guys grow? Or are you thinking about growing some? I'd like to know that. Because if it's something here that I'm also growing, we can grow it together. And I got to show you the peanuts. So maybe you saw from my short that I'm starting peanuts. I went ahead and planted some already. And this is a nice thing to do too. If you have a hangy basket, utilize it. And you're not going to have to transplant these. They're going to be ready to go in the ground and they have plenty of room to live in there. So if you buy a hanging plant every year, save the little basket. Fill it up with soil and go ahead and plant your peanuts. And this can be hung up in my sunroom and it's not taking up space on my shelves. So just something to consider. Hang up some of your vegetables in your hanging basket. So peanuts and gourds and cucumbers, things like that. As long as you're giving them about an inch and a half space in between each uh, seed, you're going to have plenty of room to uh, let them grow and be happy. Peanuts from the garden last year and the year before, I now have my own seeds. These are raw peanuts. So if you want to order seeds to do the same thing I am, if you want to go ahead and order yourself some seeds, just make sure they're raw peanuts. Just place them an inch and a half or so away from each other. You can either lay them flat down or pointy side down. Either way they'll grow. What I've done here is I'm not one of those people who like to add water to my soil and then put it in the pot. It's just too messy. I don't want to deal with messes. Easy peasy again. I don't want it to become work. So I fill this up with the dry soil, take it to my sink or to my hose, and I keep filling it up with water until I see water coming out of the bottom. Then I know this whole container is nice and wet. Then... I go ahead and I start planting. I do this with all my seeds. Doesn't matter if it's green peppers, anything at all. Easy peasy. So I'm just going to keep going around in a circle here and I'll show you it all when I'm done. Okay, so as you can see, they're all planted. All I did is keep going in a big circle in the, around the edge, again in the middle, and then I put two more in the middle. So they all have like an inch and a half space. And now I'm just gonna cover them up. That's it. That's all you have to do to plant peanuts. I'm going to add a little bit more soil. Okay, so I'm also going to cover these. And again, I don't go out and get anything fancy. These are all container tops. You know, you go to a barbecue and you bring um, a dish to pass. 
and you have those nice aluminum containers that you want to throw out so you don't have to clean your favorite baking dish. Save the top. Yes, comes in perfect for this situation. This was a lettuce container at the store. I took off the tag. That's going to cover my little seeds to give them a little humidity. We're going to spray water in the container, and then we're going to cover them back up. So they're getting humidity, light, and it's approximately 70 degrees in my sunroom. So you want to keep them a little warm. So let's go ahead and do that. I think I've just made all the mistakes. So now I know all the easy peasy ways of doing things. And I don't get stressed out about it. I don't worry about it. It's just easy to do it these ways. Get yourself a little water bottle that's only used for water for your gardening. I think I spent like, you know, $3.50 for a bottle. So there you go. See, you cover them all up. I'm gonna do this to all of them. And then we're gonna get to planting a few more seeds. I don't know where you live, but I'm in New York State. So I usually, oops, I just broke that stick. Okay, we'll have to get you a new one. There we go. I live in New York State, and I usually start my gardening vegetables, doing my seed starting. Usually, um, you know, end of March, early April, which I'm right on cue for that. Because most of your plants need that eight weeks to grow before you put them out in a garden. And you know, you don't want to shock them. While we're growing these, you're going to see all the different steps I take. So guys, this is a step I do. I throw whatever soil I have into a nice plastic bin. Then you can fill up all your potting containers and not worry about getting soil all over the floor. Again, easy peasy, quick cleanup, no sweeping, no vacuuming. Gardening is supposed to be fun. So maybe stop at your local store where you can find inexpensive uh, plastic bins and use that for all of your gardening. And then at the end of the season, you put all your clean containers into the bin and you're all set for the next season, clean and ready. I'm going to show you how to plant some beets. These are my favorite. They're Detroit dark red and they're very inexpensive. Do you see the price on that? 50 cents. So I don't mind um, <laughs> buying seeds every other year for beets. I only can about 10 jars. That gets us through at least two years of just adding them to a salad or having them on a side with a sandwich or something. So I know that I only need like 30 beets. The nice thing about beets is they grow very fast. And in saying that, I'm only going to grow 30 right now, and then I'll can them, and then I'll plant in the middle of summer 30 more beets. And by fall, I will have, hopefully, 30 more beets to do another five or six jars of uh, canned beets. And they're delicious. They're pickled, and you know you got a little vinegar in there. I'll show you that recipe another time. But... So I'm going to show you how I plant and hopefully this is going to, again, help a lot of people when it comes to how do I do this? <laughs> um, very easy. So when your containers of your dry soil are filled, whether you have a hose outside that you can do this with or you want to do it right in your kitchen, it's cold outside, so I'm doing this right in my kitchen. Nice clean sink, and if you see, I have a strainer in there. So any soil that does, you know, fall out of the containers is going to go right into there, and I can reuse that soil. So we're going to water this real good with some nice warm water. Go slow at first so your soil don't go get all over the place. So the water comes out of the bottom of the container, you got to keep doing this. You want to make sure this whole container is nice and moist. 
I'm using nice warm water. That should do it. We should see water coming out of the bottom of the containers. Yes, we do. So just let them kind of drain a little bit, and then we're going to plant whatever you want to plant today. I'm going to plant beets. And then, like I said, a container, any container, I'm going to put these in and carry them back to my sunroom in, and it's going to catch all the water. Here we go. We're going to go plant some beets. Any soil that might have came out, you can go ahead and reuse it. And it caught it. Nothing went down the drain. Easy peasy. No cleanup. So these are beet seeds. They're tiny, but not real tiny. Nothing like a carrot. You definitely can hold on to them with no problem. I'm going to start by just simply putting a little hole in five different places in these containers. I'm not going to go real deep because I am going to add a little bit of soil to the top of these if needed. But you only want to go about a quarter inch anyways. Anything that has a, you know, if you start seeing something like this in your soil, you don't want it at this stage. Definitely want to have nice fluffy soil in the beginning. Five holes times six gives me 30 beets to start with. And we're just going to plop a seed in each hole. Soil's nice and wet. Water's coming out of the bottom of the containers. And don't forget to label. Put the date on it. So you know when you started your beets. Since I do a lot of canning over here, I don't have to grow the same thing every year. So if I know, oh, I have plenty of cayenne peppers or I have plenty of scotch bonnet peppers, then I won't go ahead and grow them the next season. Maybe I'll grow more green peppers that year. You just kind of do an inventory of what you use the most. And then that's what you should plant. If you know you're going to be making a lot of spaghetti sauce, if you know you're going to be doing a lot of salsas, and you need Roma tomatoes, then that's what you plant. Don't plant things that you don't know what to do with because, again, it's going to turn into work and you're going to feel overwhelmed and you're not going to want to do it. So just plant what you guys eat the most, whether it's fresh vegetables throughout the season and you're not worried about canning or maybe you want to try canning. I know that I need at least 60 to 100 tomato plants to give me all the salsas and all the sauce pizza sauces and spaghetti sauces that I need to get through the season until I start, you know, picking more vegetables in the summer. I know I need at least 40 cucumbers to get all the pickles that I want, plus fresh eating throughout the summer. So as you can see, I'm just covering it up with the soil that's right there. I didn't need to add any more soil. Just cover them up. Soil's moist, you don't have to worry about watering it. But every day, you're gonna miss them, like I showed you earlier, in the morning and in the evening. We're gonna keep them covered under lights. And beets are adorable when they start coming up with that beautiful red and green color. Wait till you see that. Chopsticks are perfect for, for planting, by the way. It makes the perfect size seed hole. There we go. We have 30 beets planted together. And I put the top on it to give it a little bit of humidity. 
nice and cozy warm in here today. It's about 72. The sun came out. 30 degrees outside, 72 in the sunroom. Okay, so now I'm also going to mist everybody else. My cactus is a cathedral cactus. So easy to take care of. Spritz, 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 spritz. I have a lot of babies. If you're local, because these would be very hard to transplant and send on their way. If you're local, I'm going to have these for sale this year. Right at my house. Beautiful cactus, so easy to take care of. If you're one of those people that is, you know, new at gardening or home plants, cactuses are gorgeous. And they can go without water for a little while if you forget to water them. But I water them once a week. Once a week. So every Sunday with my morning coffee. My amaryllis is still in bloom, and she loves getting spritzed. We're definitely going to spritz her. Probably in another week, I will show you how to transplant this and <laughs> cut it correctly so she will come back and bloom for you again before the summer is over. Around my house, I actually get her to bloom literally every other month, about every six weeks. It's a beautiful flower, and especially during the winter months or, um, you know, when it's ugly outside, it's nice to see something blooming. That little bit of color doesn't make it feel like winter is so long. So an upcoming video after she's done blooming, I'll let you know how to cut this. I'll let you know how to transplant, because if you're lucky like I am, she actually gave me babies this year. How nice is that? A whole new bulb. Yay, Amaryllis.